What's going on everybody? Today is an insanely exciting day because if all goes well, we are going to finish the YZ300. The Panthera electric start kit has arrived. As you can see here, I've got a fresh FMF factory fatty on the bench. As you know, if you've been following the series, I was going back and forth on whether or not I get a new pipe after refinishing the other FMF factory fatty. In my last video, we surprised Reed by rebuilding his bike and I decided to give him that FMF factory fatty that I refinished. So it's time to pull the seat and tank back off and get this kit installed. Let's do it. Here is the Panthera electric start kit unboxed and laid out on the bench. We've got our new stator, new flywheel, the gear that meshes with the starter to actually turn the engine over. This is the tool used for installation. The tiniest little lithium battery ever. Button, vent hose, battery box and wires, along with the gasket. And this is a metal spacer they provided that creates just a little bit more room for that Magura hydraulic clutch slave cylinder. We've got the starter assembly itself, which is really gorgeous. So I got this Permatex oil resistant silicone gasket maker. Since the electric start kit is in an oil bath, this has to seal perfectly. And from the videos I've seen, it's important to make sure that this is sealed as well. So I'm gonna put some silicone here and get this new stator installed. While installing that stator, I did have to make one small modification. The timing mark was not perfectly aligned and I needed the stator to rotate just a little bit more but it made contact with the clutch arm. So I just ground a tiny bit of material off of that clutch arm, and then when I put it all back together, the clearance was perfect. Speaking to Sebastian at Panthera Motorsports, he let me know that you also can just remove a little bit of material from the pickup coil if this happens. It sounds like it's uncommon to have to do this mod, but there's a little bit of variation in the welding on those clutch pivot shafts, so occasionally you will have to do this adjustment. Installation of the new flywheel and gear was super easy. The one-way design of this gear is really, really sleek. Some pretty cool engineering. So the kit comes with this tool to hold this in place to torque this. I will just be using my piston stop tool to make it a little easier. It is also important to ensure that the trigger bump on the flywheel does not make contact with that clutch arm. And the Panthera instructions just tell you to bend that arm out a little bit until they are not making contact anymore. And that was pretty easy to do with a set of needle nose pliers. And the last setup step here was to make sure that the gap between that trigger bump and the magnet on the pickup coil was the correct distance. Panthera says it should be between a quarter and 0.4 millimeters. So I did a little bit of adjustment on that and got it all dialed. Now, moving on to the battery box and wiring, I was pleased to find that for the 2022 and up subframe, the battery box actually just rests in the subframe and then is secured by the seat. The little shark fin in the middle of the 2022 and up rear fender does need to be cut out. I didn't cut the whole thing out because the back of it locates the seat, but the front of it had to come out for that battery box. I simply heated up a razor blade and then melted it out. Note, if you have the charging system, the rectifier contacts the rear fender and the battery box does not sit flush, but I don't believe it's an issue. I'll touch on that a little bit more later in the video, but from here, I continued by routing the rest of the wires, which was not too tricky. I just had to tuck that harness that goes to the front of the bike between the airbox and the subframe, and then all of those routed up to the front of the bike nicely. I then got the electric start button installed and connected it to its harness. It's actually super cool that with the 22-23 subframe, the battery box literally just pops in and out of the subframe, which makes it way, way easier to change the air filter. All right guys, check it out. 
The starter and cover are bolted up, filled with oil, and currently no leak. The ground and positive are actually gonna be pretty sleek with the tank on here. You won't really be able to see them. So at this point, I can put the battery in and at least make sure that it turns over properly as it should. Alright guys, no tank right now, but the kit is fully installed, so let's see if this thing turns over the engine the way it should. Let's go. That is freaking awesome. Now I do have a little bit of bad news. I've been planning to do this build with a combination of parts that I don't know if have been used together before, being that oversized tank, electric start, and the Magura hydraulic clutch. And I knew this was a possibility, but unfortunately the slave cylinder is experiencing some binding due to that electric starter. The clutch still works, but the pull is harder and you can tell that the rod in that slave cylinder is being bound in a position that it shouldn't be. So for that reason, unfortunately, the Magura hydraulic clutch will be coming off and will be replaced with a cable clutch. If you are the winner of this bike, I will still be including that Magura hydraulic clutch. So if you ever remove the electric starter for any reason or have another YZ, you can put that clutch on it. I really wish it didn't have to be this way, but I can't anticipate everything before a build. So I still wanna give an enormous thank you to Magura for the support on this project. They make an awesome product. I have used one of these on a YZ125 I built a few years ago and I loved it. It really is a shame not to be able to run it on this build. If you're interested in getting one of these clutches, they're pretty much plug and play if you're running stock components on your bike. The install is actually easier than a cable clutch because there really isn't any required adjustment. And if you do have an aftermarket clutch or something like that, you can adjust the free play on the Magura, so they do have some adjustments available. I will still link Magura down in the description if you're interested in checking out some of their products for your bike. So all this said, we are gonna go ahead and pull this back apart to get that clutch swapped out. Well guys, it is certainly no Magura. We're back to a little bit of a harder pull, but it had to be done. I feel like I would have been doing that Magura hydraulic clutch a disservice by leaving it on the bike and not having it perform optimally. My gosh, guys, we are all buttoned up, electric start, cable clutch. This thing should fire up with electric start. One last thing to do before I try it, the shifter needs a little bit of modification. I believe the stock shifter would work without modification, but this one makes some contact here, so I'm just gonna grind some material off of the shifter. We're gonna install this and fire this puppy up with a button instead of a kicker. All right, the shifter required just a little bit more surgery than I thought. I used a coarse Prime MX wheel to cut out the back side of this a little bit, so now we have clearance on both the cover and that bolt. Also guys, I looked at a lot of photos of this oversized tank and the electric starter before starting this project and was pretty darn sure this was gonna clear, although I could not have guessed how close it would be. Check out the clearance on the petcock to the electric start. That's fuel on. That's fuel off, stoked that you can still get to it with no modifications required. I think we're ready to fire this thing off with the electric start. Boy, this has been a long, long, long time in the making. This is a big, exciting moment right here. You guys ready? First start with the Panthera electric start. Woo! Let's go! How sick is that? Oh my God, epic, epic. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just gonna take this electric start YZ300 for a quick rip around the block.
coolest thing is someone's gonna win this beast may 31st this bike is sick it absolutely rips now that it's actually been through a few heat cycles that's the first time i really hit the throttle and this thing has some power of course i expect to have a few tuning items to really finish this bike off but for right now the last part that needs to go on it is a skid plate from axp we've got the 18 inch rear wheel the oversized tank from ims the hand guards we need a skid plate to complete this off-road build truly the best skid plates in the game I've got one right here on my KTM. Reed's got one right here on his YZ250. So let's get this thing set up and installed. A pile of parts has officially become an electric start YZ300. Every part I have for this bike is now on it. The bike's complete. There are a couple small tuning items to take care of. And overall, I'm just in a little bit of disbelief that this project is coming to its end. Bike builds take an insane amount of time and dedication and seeing them through to the finish is so incredibly rewarding. Don't think you're done seeing YZ300 content. I'll be making a video breaking down all of the parts and components that went into this bike, as well as of course the start to finish build video showing the complete transformation from Danny's old blown up, clapped out YZ250 to what this bike is today. Also, I plan to ride this bike on dirt once, and being 100% honest, that is not because I want to. Of course, I do want to, I would love to keep and rip this thing, but my top priority is keeping it perfect for its next owner. That said, in my honest opinion, you can only do so much testing riding a bike up and down the block. I wanna put this bike through its paces once so that I can be confident in driving this bike to who knows where, to its next owner. It would be a shame to drive this bike across the country and have something go wrong on its first ride. Hence why I feel it's necessary to do that. Of course, it's spring in Montana. I will be waiting until there's a day when the conditions are perfect, the bike will get minimally dirty, and I can keep everything as nice as possible. If I damage anything, I'll fix or replace it. The journey isn't over, but it is certainly getting close. Guys, there's about 40 entries left to win this bike, and they are going insanely fast, way quicker than I ever could have imagined. So if you want a chance to win this thing, get your answered before it's too late. Also, quick shout out to one of my subscribers, Spencer Funk at Prod by Funky for making the beat used in this video. If you're interested in checking out his custom beats, links down below. Thanks for watching. Thank you as always for the support and I will see you guys super soon with another video.